Michael Campbell with Glossica, April 2nd, 2021, this week's update. I just wanna let everybody know that we're gonna be adding a little bit more variety to our videos and weekly updates on a more regular basis. Uh, you may not know this, but I, uh, I'm a keen uh, piano player, so if you would like to uh, hear me play something, maybe I could put something in, in the background in a future video or something like that, I can um, uh, play something for you. Uh, anything from Chopin or Rachmaninoff, if I can't play it yet, I'll sight read it or, or do something, add a little variety to the videos. I also have some uh, travel videos uh, from traveling around, uh, talking to different people that I'll also share with you guys in upcoming updates. Now, um, we finished the first quarter already in 2021, we made a lot of progress. I just want to get, let you guys know that we're rolling out a whole lot of new content, uh, getting that passed through to Viva. Uh, we're still working on automating that process. So Viva right now is still in beta, um, but you can go ahead and sign up there and we'll get through uh, to those applications uh, in due time uh, since we're working through all of the beta stages. And what that means is that we're working on automating uh, how we analyze sentences and content. So, you know, the, the basic premise of how Glossica works is that we analyze the content for its level, its complexity. There's a lot of syntactic and semantic detail that we analyze out of all of the sentences. Now, the thing is, is that off-the-shelf uh, NLP packages and toolkits don't necessarily achieve the goals that we want to achieve with that. Uh, since we're working on, I'm, I'm going to share this in a future video, but um, a part of the annotation process that we use here at Glossica is um, worth uh, sharing with you guys and letting you know like uh, how that process works. But um, getting that automated in, in to a point where we can actually um, do that in real time, that's going to take a little bit um, more effort on our part. Um, working with massive data sets as well is, is, a, is, is a challenge. Um, but... Right now, what that means for you is that we're rolling out mostly content that is in B1 and B2 levels, but there's also a lot of new content coming out in B, uh, I'm sorry, A1 and A2 levels as well. And the, the other thing that we're adding right now, which you will be able to see on Viva, is um, what we call the discourse register. And so every sentence is actually tagged for its discourse register. And so right now we have uh, four registers, and um, the one that's rarely ever used is the honorary register, like uh, your honor, uh, you're speaking to a judge or, or somebody of um, high rank. Uh, the second register would be just the polite register. Um, whenever you're speaking with customer service, somebody that you don't know, you're just asking them directions, you're asking, um, or you're buying a ticket online, or I mean, over the counter or something like this, and you need to talk to a, a customer representative, Normally, you're going to use a polite form of language. Instead of saying, what do you want? You're going to say, what would you like? You know, these kinds of um, various ways of speaking. Okay, so it may not always be that obvious in English, but there is quite a lot that happens in English that actually changes the tone of a sentence. Now, the third one is the most, most common. And so, okay, I just want to tell you that we have almost 2,000 sentences that are tagged with um, that higher register. Now, with the Normal register, we have several thousand sentences that are tagged with normal register, and that's just between, you know, people that you're acquainted with, people that you know very well. And then the fourth, um, the, the fourth one we, we hardly ever use, but it's a rude register. So if you have uh, foul language in it or you're, you're being quite um, rude in the, in the way that you're speaking, um, then we tag that as rude. And so we're building in... Um, uh, we're building in features so that, uh, you know, in the, in the backend algorithms that can actually analyze sentences automatically and figure out what the register of that, that tone of voice is. Now, there's a fifth register that we're actually working on adding and, and integrating into it, which is called sar sarcasm or sarcastic. Um, we're also thinking about irony, but, you know, like trying to tease out the differences between irony and sarcasm, um, you know, at, at, a, at a very specific sentence level is kind of difficult because you kind of need the context of, um, you know, what was said beforehand, what was said after uh, that sentence. So probably in the sense of like in the storylines, uh, that might be, make a little bit more sense. But that's just to give you an idea of the kind of the linguistic work that we're working on. 
our back end and front end teams, um, they're all working, they've got a lot of things that they're working on on the, the interface, uh, working on Viva interface and all of that. I'm not going to go into too many details um, because that, that those teams pretty, they, they work uh, pretty much independently on, on, on just improving all of that in particular. So uh, thank you for watching and that's my update for this week. Uh, look forward to hearing back from you guys.